Brilliant. Great. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for giving up some of your time this evening to come and uh, hear a presentation from the VetU team. And uh, we're so excited that uh, we've got such a great group with us this evening. Uh, so uh, I'm just about to introduce all of your speakers this evening. So um, we're really looking forward to, to sharing some of our wisdom uh, around what pensions mean for us and uh, why we were so interested in sharing some of the love, some of our beliefs as to why it's really important to put some money away for that retirement ultimately when it comes. It may seem like a long way away at the moment, uh, but you know, before you know it, blink and you miss it, your career will be in its twilight years and you'll be looking towards those savings that you made early in life to support you in, in later in life. And just to remind everybody, if you don't know, uh, VetU is a community that really helps members of the profession try and secure their independent financial future. And we, we realize that, you know, this is a very changing veterinary profession. Some of you may work in a corporate veterinary group. Others may work in an ind independent practice. You may still be in academia at university. Uh, you may be freelancing. Whichever stage of life you're at, it's never too young to start thinking about looking after yourself financially and more importantly, making sure that in the way that you save, in the way that you use your money, it delivers what you want out of your life. Uh, and certainly being as independent as you can with your finances gives you many more options later in life to do exactly whatever you would like to do. So that's what VetU is absolutely all about. And we're really pleased that uh, you're able to join us this evening. So uh, what's on the menu? Well, we're really uh, excited to have a star studied audience this evening uh, of speakers. So we've got Ruth from Reflect Financial. Ruth's a financial advisor. Um, and she's going to be telling us a little bit about the 101 of pensions and why we all must start to think about them as soon as possible. And we've also got the team from Raindrop. Hi, uh, Raindrop team, uh, who are also going to be telling you a little bit about their pension service as well. Um, I know a number of the veteran profession have really uh, dived into the raindrop pension offering um, quite an exciting new way to think about your savings for the future so uh, definitely worth staying on to hear what they've got to say um, uh, lots of polls lots of questions and answers so it's not just us preaching um, but you probably will get bored of hearing me saying whatever you do today if you haven't already started a pension at least think about starting your first pension. I, I, I started my first pension with my very first pay packet out of uh, uh, when I started in the profession. And to be honest with you, never really look back. It was money that I never noticed leaving my bank account. It was money, therefore, that uh, I couldn't spend on beer or fast cars or whatever your, uh, your, um, your, your life's wishes to spend on. Uh, but you know, start saving early is definitely the way forwards. So let's start by thinking about our very first poll. We really want to know, where are you at, at the moment? Pensions sometimes see, seem like such a long time away. Uh, and especially when you hear things in the news about pension age going up and statutory pensions, uh, you, you being unable to draw your statutory pension until you're 65, 66, 67. And you may think, well, there's plenty of time for me to think about saving for that time when I'm not working. Amazingly, I read a, uh, an article last week that talked about the life expectancy uh, of a male in Sussex. Uh, you know, being a Sussex man myself, I thought, oh, well, let, let's have a read of this. 95 is the current life expectancy for a male in Sussex. So if I want to retire at 65, which is definitely my aspiration, I've still got 30 years to try and think about how I'm going to fund. So uh, certainly glad that I've started to think about a pension before my current age of 47. Yeah, um, absolutely. So Ebony, what have we got on the uh, results? Yeah. So again, just do pop in. If you can't do polls, pop it in the chat. You know, how confident do you feel on a scale of naught to 10 with one being clueless and 10 being, I know what I need to do next when it comes to your pensions. These are all anonymous. So don't worry. You're uh, very much, uh, you know, in the same sea as all of us, we're just in slightly different boats. And actually we've got over 40% saying 
one, I'm clueless, okay? We've only, we've only got one person at seven. So there's no one at seven or above. So what we hope today is we can nudge you up one point to help you just build your confidence that you can take action. Uh, and just remember as well, there is no such thing as a stupid question in this, in this community. Um, so many of the questions you submitted, other people did too. So if you're thinking it tonight, I guarantee someone else or myself will be thinking it. Um, and the team at Range Up have had to deal with all my stupid questions um, over, the, over the months. So please do pop it in the chat. If you want to ask anonymously, I get that too. You can message any one of us anonymously using the Zoom chat as well. So we've got 38% at one, 19% at two, uh, 36% at three, and only one seven. Now, many people might not think that pensions are exciting, but even that person that uh, said that they think they know a little bit about pensions, I guarantee will pick up a new piece of information tonight because the thing about pension legislation and saving for your retirement is it's subject to the changing laws and the changing aspirations of the government to help us focus on whether how much we should be saving for the future. And, and you may even hear about the budget when the chancellor decides how he's going to distribute all of our tax revenues and included in that may well be some changes in pension provision coming up. So the budget is later on this month, uh, less than a, about a week away now. Uh, and so, you know, keeping up to date with anything about pensions is really, really important so that you can make the right amount of saving uh, for you. OK. I'm not going to bore you uh, much about VetU, but you know, VetU was really founded by four individuals, all uh, veterinary surgeons, who have come to uh, different points in their life, but all realizing that actually what was most important to them was being financially independent. Whether you aspire to be a multimillionaire or whether you're just quite happy getting by on a minimum wage, whichever those is, it, it, you camps you fall in, trying to be independent with your finances is the one thing that's going to give you confidence in life to tackle everything that it throws at you. Understand it, knowing that you understand money, what it's about. It's often seen as a dirty word. People often don't want to talk about what they earn or uh, how much money they've got or, or what they do with their money. Uh, that's a very peculiarly British thing. You certainly don't see that if you go across the pond. We want to try and break some of those stigmas and get people talking about what, what is important. And, and that you really is founded on three principles. Make sure that you've got financial independence to, to support your health. Make sure you've got financial independence to ensure that you have a regularity of income and make sure that you've got financial independence that supports your future. And that could be savings. And tonight we're talking about pensions. And also here we have uh, brief bios uh, from each of our speakers. And in fact, let me turn over to them to give, they can give you a 30 second snapshot as to what brings them here tonight and why pensions are important to them. Vivian, go first. Uh, hi everyone, lovely to be here. So one of the co-founders of Raindrop, uh, we built a flexible flexible uh, pension solution for people where they can contribute flexibly, they can open a pension with a limited company, they can also find and trace any old pensions from previous jobs. Uh, having worked in the finance industry previously, we knew how opaque the pension industry was. And when you move jobs, the pension unfortunately doesn't move with you. Um, so we built a very simple to use online solutions so that savers can have all their pensions in one place and contribute and, and start building up the retirement fund. I'm guilty that when I was working, I didn't max out my employer contributions and I feel really bad about it. But this journey has definitely given me more confidence to take control of my personal finances. Great. Thank you, Vivian. Well, the pensions industry may be opaque, but tonight we're hoping to leave everybody crystal clear about what they need to do. It sounds very cheesy, doesn't it? Phil, introduce yourself. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name's Phil. Uh, my background, so I'm also one of the co-founders at Raindrop. Uh, I run the uh, the product side of things. My background was in traditional finance, more um, back in the day on the equities floor. But um, I was quite surprised when I was uh, working with this on Advance to realize how out of out of touch I was with the pensions, uh, the pensions legislation and understanding everything that was going on, even though I used to be in finance. 
Um, and then I actually quit to start my, my own business, became an entrepreneur myself uh, and did that for about a year and a half uh, before I, I joined the Raindrop team. And it was when they sort of approached me with this, this problem about the self-employed and this flexible pension issue that I came to realize that I wasn't even saving for my own retirement as the director of my own company at the point in time. And that's the point that I realized uh, when we started knocking on WeWorks back in the days when we could pre-COVID that I wasn't the only one. Um, so that's when I got on the bandwagon here of trying to solve this problem and help everyone save for their own retirement in a way that makes sense for them, whether you're self-employed, employed, director of a limited company, or whatever that might be. Great. Thank you, Phil. And Ruth, welcome. Yes, thank you, Matt. And hi, everyone. So I am Ruth and I'm a financial advisor for Reflect Financial. And I'll be guiding you through everything pensions today. Now, pensions are my jam. I love them. So you are in more than safe hands. Um, I do what I do because I like to try and take the confusion out of anything financial. I like to empower you with the knowledge so you're able to make the best decisions for yourself and your future. And I'm always at the end of the phone for any help or advice. And that's Great. me. Excellent. Well, as you can see, uh, hugely experienced team here. What we found at VetU, though, what's most important is when you're talking about your finances, you've got to feel comfortable with who you're talking to so that you're confident in the information that they're giving you and you can make the right decisions for your personal future. So that's why we've given you a selection of what we think are some of the very best advisors in the industry here this evening. But equally, we work with other advisors as well. So, you know, however you want to engage, please reach out to Vivian, Phil or Ruth after this evening. Or if ne none of those have ticked your box, uh, please reach out to any of the VetU, hello at VetU, and we'll make sure that we can find somebody that understands your personal circumstances and can lead you to making the right decisions about your future, because that is what's most important. Okay, over to my glamorous assistant. We have a second poll just to see who you are and how you make your living. Yeah, so you might fall into a couple of these as well, we're aware, but just pick your main one, uh, which is great. It means that the, our, our guests here can, can really tailor their advice or their support um, or their tips and tricks based on what you, what you are. So are you employed? Are you a limited company director? Are you freelance, self-employed, student or other? Or if you're something completely different, again, do share it in the chat because um, we're always wanting to help to build products, services and educational tools based on you know, how you're living and how you're working. And, and, and I noticed that most of the audience this evening, Ebony, are employed, but what yep. I would really like to point out at this stage is, just because you're employed and should by law have a pension provided by your employer doesn't mean you can't think about additional pensions or a personal pension or a separate private pension. Uh, many of you may be disappointed by the amount that your employer is putting into your pension and, and what they are uh, statutorily or required by law to put into your pension. Uh, and when we come on to Ruth, I'm sure she's going to tell us that we maybe should be thinking a little bit more about how much we do put in on a month by month basis. So oh, yes. uh, even if you're employed and already have a pension, please listen tight, because uh, I personally believe that having a personal pension alongside any employee uh, employer pension is, is vital if you're to have uh, a success, uh, successful retirement. Great. Yeah, so most employed, but we have got limited company directors and freelancers in the mix too. And you never know when you might move between the two, which I do often. <laughs> it's, it's the beautiful thing about the veterinary profession. Unlike uh, our colleagues in medicine or law or accountancy, if they take a step out of their career for a year or two, they find that they go back a rung or two. Actually, with veterinary medicine, I think it's almost the opposite. Take a year out and come back with new and enlivened skills about what it's like to work uh, elsewhere or to travel uh, and you might find that you've gone up a rung or two when you look for your next employer so uh, that'd be my other piece of advice tonight today always think about doing something as exciting as you can especially in your early years plenty of time to to sit back and think about uh, uh, mortgages and families and everything else in the future okay and uh, we also obviously want to hear all your questions so please keep popping them in the chat 
Um, if you don't want to ask them tonight, drop the drop us a message either via social media or at hello at bet you or contact one of our wonderful presenters tonight who will help you personally. And we have had a huge number of questions already uh, sent in from, from all of you. So thank you so much. We really hope that the presentation tonight or the presentations tonight will answer the vast majority of these. If they don't, if there's something specific that you would like uh, us to answer, again, we'll try and get to that at the end. Uh, I know that uh, Raindrop and Ruth have got answers to most of these. We've made sure that they were pre presented with the questions, but they may not answer it in the way that you want, uh, that, that particularly answers your specific uh, point. So we'll pick up on those as we go through, but all great questions. Um, as I said at the start, there's always something new to learn about pensions. Uh, and so it's an ever changing field. So always important to keep asking those questions at whatever stage of your career you're at. And, and, and it's great having a relationship with somebody that you can ask those questions to periodically. Some of you maybe even annually as you review your savings for the future it is uh, for, it, for me is an important part of making sure you manage your money in the best way possible. Right. So. Is it okay? Just go back to the other slide, but we'll start with some of those questions and work our way through them. Um, so let's start at the top. What is a pension? A pension scheme is simply a type of savings plan. It's a long-term savings plan to help you save money for later life. And there are fantastic tax advantages compared with other types of savings. So how do they work? Pensions can be an awesome planning tool um, and they are an investment too so you save some of your income regularly during your working life into a pension this gives you an income in later life when you want to work um, less or just completely retire that's the meaning of a pension security when you're older so one of the main questions i get asked is how does it work with taxes and it blows a lot of people's minds so i'll Go through, um, go through this bit by bit. One of the best features of using a pension to save for retirement is the tax relief. When you pay into your pension, some of the money that would have gone to the government as, as tax goes towards your pension instead. Now this can help reduce the amount of tax you pay uh, and give your savings a boost for the future as well. So this tax relief is given based on the rate of income tax that you pay. So you, you need to know, first of all, what type of taxpayer you are. So you're a basic rate taxpayer if you earn less than £50,270 a year. You're a higher rate taxpayer if you earn between £50,271 and £150,000 a year. And an additional rate taxpayer if you earn more than £150,000. Now, why am I telling you this? Because basic rate taxpayers can claim 20% tax relief, as this is how much tax you pay on your relevant earnings. Higher rate taxpayers get 40%, and additional rate taxpayers earning 150,000 or more, 45%. If you pay the money into your pension yourself, or if it's taken by your employer, because you're employed, so from your pay packet, you automatically get 20% tax back from the government as an additional deposit into your pension pot. So if you're higher rate or additional rate, you'll need to claim the additional tax relief via self-assessment, but you can speak to someone like me can, who can help you with that. So if we just go on to the next slide, Matt, putting it another way, um, how does the tax relief work? Go through it again. There we go. If to get £100 put into a pension, a basic rate taxpayer needs to pay in only £80. This is because the taxman then adds £20 to your pension pot. Higher rate taxpayers, they need to um, save £60 to get £100. And top rate taxpayers, uh, £55. So what does this say? Tax relief is good. You put money in and the government adds money on top. And the more tax you pay, you can claim more kind of free money back from the inland revenue. Lots of really good uh, advantages of paying money into a pension. And let's face it, who doesn't like a little bit of free money? 
So on to the next slide, if that's all right, Matt. Thank you. Now, this is something that you touched on, Matt. It's a slide that I kind of wanted to show the importance to save for later life. The 100 year life is something that all of us need to start thinking about and preparing for. Now, I'm not sure when majority of um, were born that are on the, um, on the call today, but if you want to put it into the chat, it'll give us an idea. But let's take 1987, which is just above midway up that ladder. Um, that says if you're born in 1987, you're expected to live to the age of 97 years old. And then, as you can see, 1997, expected to live to 99 years old. Technology is advancing. People are living longer. And if you decide to give up work and retire at 65, would you have made sufficient plans to provide an income for another 35 years? Which brings me on to the next slide. And this is something that I believe, Paul, we've got 10% that are on today, which are, um, they're limited. There we go. Um, it's, it's how do I differ if I'm self-employed versus a limited company? Now, if you set up on your own, as a limited company, you also have the option to make your pension contributions from your company. Doing it this way is classed as an allowable business expense and the tax relief that you get is offset against the profits of your business by your company's corporation tax bill. Now, if you make the contributions yourself and not through the company, that is when you get the government giving you the uplift. So, um, on to the next one, we'll go back to the main question list and we'll look at who sets, who sets them up. So who can set up a pension for you? The absolutely wonderful people that are on this call. It all depends on whether you want advice and someone to help look at an all round view of your kind of personal circumstances, in which case a regulated financial advisor like myself, moi, uh, who will make a recommendation personal to you. Or if you want to just manage it yourself, simply set one up, um, in which case you can deal with Raindrop, who are also on the call as well. So you've kind of got all bases covered. Now, can you have multiple uh, pensions? You can. Uh, you can have a number of pensions. But the problem with this is that each one will have different charges, different funds you'll be invested in, different attitudes to risk you may have. Now, what I mean by that is with one pension, you could be invested quite cautiously, whereas with another, it might be slightly more risky. If you, it could just have been the default one that was given to you when you set it up, but you need to manage them all and keep track on how much is where and is it sufficiently growing to the amount that you need to retire on. So it's much better to have all your pensions in kind of one pot. It can grow quicker. And 5% growth, let's just say, for example, on £2,000 compared to £40,000 is substantial, especially when the interest is added back into your investment. And in all honesty, do you know kind of where all your pensions are at the minute? Because the Association of British Insurers estimates that more than 1.6 million pension pots were, get this, 19.4 billion are lost. If they're all in one place, you know where to find them and manage them. So like Matt said, why have a pension? One thing that unites nearly everyone is the intention to stop working one day. Um, and I don't know if anyone remembers the A-team, Hannibal and his fa favorite catchphrase. Matt, do you remember? Uh, what's up, fool? I love it when a plan comes together. Oh, sorry. You let, you let, let me down. Not um, B.A. Yeah. Baracus, the wrong one. <laughs> um, it's good to have a plan. With a plan, you can plan and you can prepare. The earlier you start saving, the better due to a thing called compounding. And this is the process where interest is added to an existing amount, as well as to interest that's already been paid. And there's a great next slide, if we can just come on to that, with uh, two people, Daisy and Ken. Now, I know these figures might be a little bit small, but I'll explain them. Daisy started saving into a pension when she was 25, all the way up to 65, and she put £200 per month in. And by the end of it, she put 96000 in, which is the kind of orangey, um, orangey red colour at the bottom. 
Now, Ken decided to start slightly later. Um, he started at 45 and put 400 pounds per month in, and he saved up to 65 and saved the same amount, 96,000 pounds. Now, because of a wonderful thing that I've just talked about, compounding and interest rolling up and continuing to be invested, Daisy's pot grew by an additional 210,476 pounds because it was invested all the way from 25 to 65. But because Ken's was only invested from 45 to 65, his only grew by just over 69,000 pounds. Now, I don't know about you, but I know which one I'd prefer to have in my pot. And that's just the, saved exactly the same amount, but it just rolled up over time because of the length of time that she was invested. So, Let's go on to the next slide, Matt, please. What determines the size of the pot? Um, we're just middle, midway through. There are, absolute, there, are, there are lots of factors that can determine this. Um, how much you put into it, how frequently, how cautiously or risky you want to be with your investment, where you invest it. Do you want an environmental, social and governance fund that we're gonna talk about in a little bit? international equities, emerging markets, bonds, the list goes on. But I wouldn't come into your job and be able to pick it up. So I'm here to help you with that and guide you through the process to determine what kind of investor you are and give you some friendly advice with this as well. So how frequently to contribute? You can contribute as frequently uh, as you want. You can do it via monthly installments or a lump sum at the end of the year or whenever you like, but it's worth committing to a certain amount um, early every month to get into a healthy habit. Even if you, if you only put a little in, then you, it can only grow by a little. So try to remain as um, disciplined as you can. So when can you start taking it out? People who are currently aged 55, are able to access their pensions now. And since 2015, and a wonderful thing called pension freedoms, um, you can access, access them a lot more flexibly, taking as much or as little cash as you like, whenever you like. It's worth noting though, that for the majority of us that, uh, that are on this call today, the government said the age in which you can access your pension will rise. So for example, um, age 57 in 2028, um, or for me, it will be 58 um, in 2039. So what is auto enrollment? This is for people who are employed by a company and earn between 6,240 and 50,270 pounds a year. It was launched in 2012. And the aim of auto enrollment is to increase the proportion of employees to save for retirement. Basically, the struggle, uh, the government was struggling to cope. People are living longer and due to people not having as many babies now, there aren't enough people in the workforce to pay tax, which helps fund the state pension. So if you're in an employed role, auto enrollment now requires employers to offer employees a pension to automatically enroll you into their scheme, and more importantly, to contribute um, on your behalf. So currently, enrollment is automatic for people aged 22 or earning a minimum of 10,000 pounds from a single job, but your employer must write to you when you have been auto-enrolled, so you should know and have been notified. So next one is, uh, what are the contribution rates? Um, no. The contribution rates is that the company, they contribute, you put and you put in yourself as well, and you get free money from the government. Now, currently, the minimum employee contribution is 3%. You pay 4% and the government pays in the other 1%, giving a total of 8%. Now, there's a wonderful thing I'm going to throw at you now, um, and it's called salary sacrifice. Um, and that's something that you can also have. Your employer may allow you to contribute more into your pension by sacrificing, hence salary sacrifice, um, as part of, you know, part of your salary. I just set one up for a company the other day who was offering up to 10% matching contributions it's always great just to check um, what scheme you have and kind of what is available. 
So state pension, let's spend a little bit of time here. How much state pension you'll get is based on something called your national insurance contributions and your history. You need a minimum of 10 years contributions or credits to get any pension and 35 years on your record to get the full amount. Now, I bet you're thinking, oh, you know, how can I find out um, how much I have? There's a wonderful form called BR19. And if you go on the government website, this will tell you how much you have. Um, just Google um, how much state pension will I have and it should pop up. Now, as an employee, if you're an employee, you pay class one um, NICs, so national insurance contributions on your earnings from employment, such as your salaries and bonuses. Now, those who are self-employed will be paying class two national insurance contributions through your annual um, self-assessment tax return. And you pay class two if your profits are, I think it's 6,475 or more a year. And it works out at three pounds and five pence a week. And class four um, national insurance contributions if your profits are 9,501 or more a year. But you can only claim your state pension when you reach your state pension age. For people reaching state pension age now, it will be age 66, but the government has a link where you can check yours as well. So you can just once again, Google what's my state pension age and it will pop up. Now I was born, I'm gonna show my age here, 1981. So I can access mine at 68 years old. Um, and it's interesting because if you're self-employed, you may only have kind of paid, if you're employed for a certain amount of time in a year, part of that year. Now, yesterday I actually called up um, just to test the process. And you can actually put in additional contributions to make up a full year. So it is definitely worth going on to check. Now, the amount of times that I've heard people say to me, I don't need a pension roof. The government will look after me. Um, have a think of a figure now how much you think if you had 35 years contributions, you will get. Do you have that figure? The new state pension provides up to 179 pounds and 60 pence a week, which produces an annual income of just over 9,000 pounds and 9,339 pounds and 20 pence. Is this what you thought it was gonna be? Um, it's a really good base point, but it certainly isn't gonna fund my pina coladas on the beach in Mauritius. But absolutely everyone is different. Some of my clients want to include it as part of their retirement plan and others don't. So here's some homework for you, but you didn't think you were going to get that today. Um, how much do you think that you would want to retire on? Look at your lifestyle now and think about the differences you will have when you retire. You won't have as much petrol costs from going to and from work. Will you downsize your property? Will you take more holidays? Absolutely everyone is different. Um, take your current salary as a base point. Would this fund your retirement and do you want more or less? So just on to the next slide, please, Matt. There we go. Might be a little bit small, but you can kind of um, see it. The Pension and Lifetime Savings Association, I get my teeth back in, very kindly carries out analysis to help savers get a handle on how much different lifestyles will cost when the time comes to take the plunge and enter the world of retirement. So for an individual, and this is outside of London, a minimum standard of living will cost £10,900 per year. Now that's not too far off the state pension. However, there are a few things to think about. And if you look at this, you'll see. Do you really want to retire and uh, wait to retire until you're 67 before you stop working? Do you only want to holiday in the UK? Do you want to keep your car? And is £10 enough per birthday present? While guidance like this is a great start point, the question that really needs answering is this. What does your minimum look like? And this is something that I can work with you to help find that out. So very, very finally, in summary, the pension, um, if we go on the next slide, Matt, please. This summarises absolutely everything. Your top takeaways, start as soon as you can. It really does, like look at Daisy and how much she accumulated. It really does help. 
um, and set a figure so that you can stick to it as well. And just try and be disciplined with it to make sure you set aside that certain amount because it really will help later. And make sure that they keep reviewing it, whether you're with Raindrop or whether you set something up privately, just keep on top of it and keep checking to see how it's done. And stay enrolled because if your employer is willing to offer you uh, to help pay into a pension for you as well, it's worth its weight in gold. And just make sure that you do assess um, how risky you want to be with your investment. And we go from there. So thank you for listening. I hope that has been really, you know, informative for you. And please know that you can always ask me any questions at the end or after the call at any time. And I'm more than happy to explain it to you. Thank you, Ruth. That's wonderful. And uh, true to form, I did learn something myself again. <laughs> doesn't matter how many times I hear talks on pensions, a BR19 is something that I'm definitely going to be checking out uh, to see uh, where my uh, where my state pension might be. So thank you so much for, for such an informative talk. Um, right, another poll. Another poll. And while we're, while we're on this poll here, um, Ruth, I don't know if you just want to answer the question that's just come in from Anna, which is, if pensions are an investment product and not secure, is it possible to lose money? Are there better products? If you want to save for retirement and you're willing to kind of leave it there, um, invested, uh, for me, I don't think there is any better uh, tool than, um, than saving into a pension for that. There are obviously no guarantees. So um, past performance is no guarantee of future performance. We don't know what's around the corner um, with the likes of COVID. But I do know that the market did bounce back within, within the year that COVID hit and went straight back up again. So yeah, that it all depends on your personal view of how you want to invest. Um, and then we can go from there. Yeah, thank you. That's brilliant. And I know that the, the Raindrop crew can pop something in the chat as well, as can Matt. So this has been a really important thing, ethical investments. It's something that's come up in our community quite a bit. I think being Betley professionals, people who care about the planet, the people, uh, the flora and fauna that's upon it, I think it's uh, an important one and something that Vet Sustain has also um, championed too. If you're not part of that community, I urge you to go and check them out. And the awesome crew at Raindrop have been listening to their audience throughout um, their build and this is something I know that they've been thinking about including and they will uh, tell us a little bit more about their next steps in their company when they do their demo as well so ethical investments if you had an option of ethical investments would this be something you were interested in 62% of you are saying yes and 38% of you are saying unsure for those unsure it'd be great to hear perhaps why you feel unsure or what makes you feel that way um, it's just really great to have insights um, to see how we can best place products and services your way so without further ado I'm going to hand over to the raindrop crew um, uh, we got hooked up by a mutual friend in the vet space as well actually um, the raindrop lot have been so so helpful for me personally I use them so I can speak from personal experience as someone who's worked for so many different companies has been freelancer gone back into employment and ping-ponged around um, it's been great to have this one-stop shop for me to consolidate my pensions and to give me flexibility when I'm working and when I'm not and the contributions that I place in so Vivan and Phil I'm going to hand over to you Thanks, Ebony. Um, yeah, and uh, thanks, Ruth, for that. That was very, very, uh, very comprehensive, and you covered almost everything there. I almost have nothing to talk about. Um, so I'm just going to have to go straight into the demo on the back of that. Uh, just let me work out where the share screen button is. Oh, I might. Um... You should be a co host. You should be all right to do it. But let me just, yep, you're a co host. You should be, you should be able I don't know to. If it's because you're currently sharing a screen. Yeah, yes, exactly. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so we'll put in the chat as well the links for you to check out um, Raindrop 2. And when Phil gets going in a moment, they're also giving everyone here at RetU um, a really great giveaway, which which Phil will, will, will share at the end. Fantastic. Can everyone see my screen? Thumbs up. Yeah. Fantastic. Perfect. Um, so, yes, uh, the main thing that I'm going to do now today is, is lead you through a quick product demo and show you how really uh, simple it can be to set up a pension. Um, hopefully we remove all the jargon, bring out all the important bits and give you all the information you need so that you can make an informed decision yourself on what the right pension or investment plan is for you. Um, so if you ever pop down to our website at myrangeup.co.uk, you can click to get started or sign up. 
and it will effectively take you once you've verified your email uh, to our sort of onboarding process. Um, and as you saw there, it said that we are the digital and flexible pension for the self-employed. But one thing that's really important to emphasize, as Matt said before, is that we're also open to employed people, directors of limited companies, because even if you're self-employed and don't have a workplace pension, we're still open and you can still get a raindrop pension as an employed person. And as I talk through this, or a, a personal pension, as I talk through this, uh, I'll explain why there might be other benefits as well to having a, a your own personal pension. For example, having a place to consolidate Consolidate your other workplace pensions as you move through different careers or jobs in your lifetime. Um, those won't move with you, but your personal one can, and you can therefore keep consolidating into it. But we'll get into that in a second. So to show you the process on how simple it is to set up a, a pension with Raindrop, um, once you sign up, we lead you through this four-step process. The first thing we like to do is estimate what your pension could be worth. We'll do a similar exercise that Ruth just went through there to try and show you how big your pension could get and how long it could last you at retirement. Uh, we'll help you uh, give you the information to look at plans that will match your retirement age that might be more appropriate for you. And um, then we'll verify your identity and then you can open your account with us with as little as one pound. So going through that process, you can see here that we just collect some basic information on you. This is very much needed just to go and do that calculation so that we can show you how much your pension pot could be worth. You want to target a retirement age that you're, you're looking to hit. We all want to hit 55, but we all know that that might be not quite realistic. Uh, the, uh, the state retirement age at the moment is 68. Um, so, you know, that's roughly a good, a good target, but let's put 65 in for now and be a little bit uh, ambitious. Um, you can be self-employed or employed. Let's go employed because I think most people here were employed. And let's say we start targeting, you know, a target of, of 400 pounds a month. We can go on to calculate what our pension could be worth here. So as Ruth sort of showed before in her calculations, given the numbers we've been put here, I'd end up contributing between whatever age I am now here. Um, so 28 up until 65, I'd end up putting in 175,000 pounds. I gained 43,000 pounds just from the tax relief that Ruth mentioned before. Um, and if I was a higher rate tax earner, as Ruth mentioned, you would get even more, which you would have to claim back through your self-assessment. So this is just a minimum in terms of the amount of tax that you could potentially get back. And then that compounding interest that we cannot emphasize enough on how important that is, is this potential growth here um, that then builds your pot up even further. And what we allow you to do is to tweak around with this model. I'll explain this other, this other bar here, this inflation concept in a second. But at the end of the day, you end up with what the equivalent of 272,000 pounds is here. We show you if you want to see what it could be pessimistically, maybe it's 159,000. If things go swimmingly, you know, it could be half a million. Um, and if that looks like something, you know, we, we get that at the end of the day, that might not mean too much to you. Like, what does half a million do? Well, then we have this other little chart, interactive chart, where we go and say, well, you know, what happens if I spend two and a half thousand pounds every every month from now on to meet my my living standards? Ah, well, in this case, this half a million will last me till I'm 82. Ooh, maybe I should probably aim to spend maybe more like 2000. So I aim for 87, 88. But effectively, it can allow you to at least get a sense of how long that money will last. And you can tweak around with it, put in an extra 400, put an extra 50 quid. Now it gets you up a little bit further, you know, and, and see where that takes you or try to retire a little bit later. If you retire a little bit later, oh, there we go. This now goes off the edge of the graph. So happy days. I can spend a little bit more. Fantastic. Um, so we, we really want to help you give you the tools so that you can see what your what your retirement could be worth. This inflationary concept here and um, that I, I just I won't get into too much jargon on it, but we try to be very transparent on what this money is worth. And it goes maybe back a little bit to the question that was asked earlier. The best way that I can explain inflation in my head is that the price of bread was probably about half of what it is today, 30 years ago. So let's say the price of a loaf of bread was 50p. Today, it's a pound. The difference between that price increase over time is inflation. It's the fact that the cost of living to have the same lifestyle you do today is typically going up. And the reason why it relates to the question earlier is uh, the person asked about, about whether you know, a pension has risk, whether you, know, you can lose money, and it depends on the investments or the plans you have in there. But typically, yes, the, the you can, your capital can go down. You'll invest in a plan that takes investment risk. But to a certain extent, if you don't take risk, and you just keep all of your money in cash and it doesn't go up by the cost of inflation, then you know your money stays at being worth hundred pounds, but the price of bread doubles, you get half as much bread in your future. And therefore, you know, you, you've kind of inherently become a little bit less wealthy compared to the rest of everyone else. So just something to keep in mind. So 
once we've estimated the value of your pension, you can go on to pick an investment that gets you there. We tell you a little bit about the benefits. Our, our pensions charge one all-in simple fee of 0.75%. That's about £6.25, I believe it is, a month for every £10,000 you have saved with us. They're independently safeguarded. We're under the same protection as any other pension company in here in the UK. Uh, we're all FSCS, well, financially service compensation scheme covered, uh, up to £85,000, et cetera. Then we give you two options here. Now, this is where we were talking a little bit about our ethical options. We're actually launching this next week. So I think we've all been holding on very tightly for this cup to be coming. So this register interest button has been here for a little bit, and I can talk a little bit more about that later. But by next week, uh, you will be able to move into the, our ethical plan. Um, and you can do that. You can sign up today by all means, and you can switch your plan in the dashboard. It will be available straight away to go. Uh, so don't let that put you off signing up today because if there's anything I've learned about pensions, it's it's better to get it out of the way as soon as possible. Um, it's not one of those things, as we mentioned before, with the power of compounding that you want to leave to, to tomorrow. Um, so the important thing here is with our current investment plans, we call them the sort of our tailored plans. The idea behind them is... <clears throat> As sort of Ruth mentioned, you know, everyone has a different perception of risk, but we kind of wanted to change things on, on their head a little bit. We understand that you might not know if you should be taking high risk or if you're low risk or what your risk tolerance is. So instead, we have we mark our funds by the age that you want to retire and therefore what the age that they're most appropriate for is, given what they're intended to do. And what that typically means is if that you're younger, this will put you into a plan that takes a little bit more risk because typically you have longer to go and therefore can afford to ride the ups and downs. And if you're older, then it's a little bit of a less risky plan because you might retire soon and therefore need to take the money out. So going through that, you can obviously see the performance. We have some FAQs to try and get you comfortable with your money being safe as it is, same protections that everyone else has. Once you've read through that, you can select that fund. And then once you've done that, we simply go through a couple of quick questions that we need to know about you. Uh, are you a UK tax resident? What's your full legal name? What's your nationality? Sorry, the Zoom controls are in the way of me. Here we go, British. Uh, what's your marital status? What's your gender? We just need this information, unfortunately, because it's required by the government to set up a pension. Um, and then what your national insurance number is. I'm just going to put a, a fake one in here that meets it, because um, I won't start to the end. We ask for your permanent residential address. Again, just required information for us to verify that you are who you say you are. And at this point, we would undergo, we'll, we'll pay you back the T's and C's, the terms and conditions, but this is all pretty standard stuff when it comes to setting up fin any financial plans like this. It's also key to note that you can cancel this within 30 days um, of, of setting up your plan with no repercussions. And then once you confirm this, we verify your identity, uh, which will happen in the background. And then we go on to set up our payment. Uh, which you can set off and start, as we mentioned, with as little as one pound. And again, these are just fake credentials for our testing, uh, for our for our demo environment. Um, but you can set up a monthly or you can do a simple one off if you just want to see the service and get started. And once you accept that and set up your direct debit and I click confirm here, it will go and set up my account, which I won't go and do now uh, because there's a couple of other cool things that I just want to show you quickly. So once you set up your account with Raindrop, um, if I go back here to show you my account or a, another real account, you'll be offered or be open to seeing your dashboard where you can see how much your pension's worth and how much it's changed over time. But one of the biggest problems that we mentioned before were all of these lost pensions that we know employed people have here in the UK. So a service that we've found to be incredibly value for our valuable for our customers is this find your old pensions one. And what we do here is we tell you a little bit about how it works, uh, but basically we do all the heavy lifting for you. So if you worked at three or four different companies in the past, you know, you know, you work for Tesco or, or some other veterinary company. I'm sorry, I'm not too clued into all of them out, out there at the moment, but you know, someone might have set up a pension for you, uh, but you don't know who that provider was. All you need to do is tell us who that employer was. So for me back in the day, I worked for Barclays. I tell us approximately when you worked for them. You can add another one that you like. Maybe you know one of them was with Aviva and you can add that here and choose Aviva and go on and add as many as you'd like. And if you go and do this and agree to these T's and C's and click submit, again, I won't do that here. It's literally as simple as that. We will go out and do use our team and our, our internal operation processes that and automations that we've created to go and help you find these pensions. And then once we've done that, you'll be able to go and track them all in your Raindrop dashboard. So here's one that I did earlier in good art attack fashion. Um, so here's my old legal and general pension, which I've now had transferred over. But you can monitor them and track them in your dashboard and choose to transfer them over so that you have them all in this Raindrop pot. 
And as you go through different jobs in your lifetime, as we mentioned before, you know, you can just tell us that you've moved job or that you're starting a new job. We'll go and find out who that is, add it to your dashboard. And as soon as you leave that job, you can then go and, and transfer it on or combine it with us so that you can keep tracking everything all in one place. Um, so having said all of that, I think those are the main things. I think there's one other cool thing that I think Ebony wants me to show, which is our little calculator as well. So I have gone through all of that and that's our sort of in-app and how you sign up and for a pension and some of the services that we offer. But if you haven't quite got comfortable yet with wanting to do that, that's completely fine. We have a little calculator on our website if you'd like to explore first, which can go and do that same little experience that we just did when you signed up to see what your pension could be worth. You can play around with how old you are, how much rough income you earn, um, how much you'd like to try and save each month and when you want to retire and you can click calculate and again play around what happens if I retire a little bit later okay my pot goes up we break this out for you again to the government tax relief and how much that is how much this compounding investment part could be and how much you'll put in and then again you can play around and see how long that will last your retirement and you can even go on to see what happens if you would start ramping up later on so you know you can't afford to put in more than say 50 pounds a month now but what happens if you you know if you delay saving by one year you know how big of an impact is that um and if you can't afford to start now as i said sorry this is what i meant the ramping one you can see how much if you started at 70 and then added more in uh apologies for that and that will show you how much your pension pot could be worth in those two scenarios so with not ramping here it was worth 67 and when we ramped it up just by adding an extra 20 pounds the, the year after we were able to reach a target of 153. So I think an important message here is starting no matter with as little as whatever, as little as it might be, but getting into good habits and ramping up is incredibly powerful. So I think I've covered everything there. Um, the main points that we wanted to sort of talk through. I think the only last thing to say, as Ebony mentioned, is just to, to mention again that we're offering a free 25 pounds into your pension for anyone that sets theirs up with uh, with us and that vet you link over the next two weeks. Um, and yeah, I think that's all from me, unless anyone else has any other questions. Amazing. We've got a few questions that have come in, um, which is brilliant. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So we've got a question here. When you say aim to pay in 15%, is this 15% of what you'd want to live on after retirement? Question. Really much that was for you or for the Raindrop crew? How more than happy Ruth to answer that one. Yeah, I'm more than happy to answer it. So um, it's when you say paying 15%, that's 15% of what your salary is um, is now. So that's what's going into a pension to then kind of um, do its thing and, and earn, earn the total amount. So once again, I would come back to looking at the figure that you feel that you would need to retire on. Um, and then we work from there to work back how much you want and then we work back to how much you would need to kind of start saving now brilliant thank you we've we've, we've, had, we've had another question about uh, people really encouraged to boost their pensions which is fantastic either because they now feel a little wor a little bit worried that they've got to a certain age and and feel that they're not going to build the pot up that they want or or maybe you've been fortunate enough to have been left some money or you've got a little bit of savings that uh, 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 earning you a derisory rate of interest at the moment that you think will be better place put into your pension. So maybe I could ask both of you, I'm going to start with uh, you, Ruth. Um, uh, how, how much can we put in uh, at a single time into our pension if we've got some spare cash available? That is an absolutely fantastic question. Um, and it was something I was going to talk about i don't want to confuse it further for you guys but your tax relief um is kind of on a pension contribution is restricted to the higher of either three thousand six hundred pounds so basically a child if you have a child you can actually pay into a pension for your child of 306 uh three thousand six hundred pounds or a hundred percent of your relevant earnings subject to what we call the annual allowance which is currently forty thousand pounds now, that might seem like a load of mumbo jumbo, so I'll just kind of uh, break it down. If you earn £20,000, but put £25,000 into your pension pot, perhaps because of an inheritance or savings, you'll only be entitled to the tax relief on £20,000. So you can literally put as much as you want in, but it's all to do with making sure that you get that tax relief. 
And similarly, if you earn £60,000 and want to put that amount into your pension in single tax year, you'll normally only be entitled to the tax relief on £40,000. But there's a wonderful thing called um, carry forward where we can go back years, but more than happy to speak to someone to find out what they are able to contribute. They can just contact me and I'll, I'll help work that out with them. Great. Thank you. And, and Phil, maybe I can ask you a question leading on from that. How much can we put into our pension over our entire lifetime? Is it literally limitless or is there a cap to the total amount? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question too. Uh, so there is unfortunately a cap as well. Um, although it is, it is a, it is a nice target for us to all hit. I think, um, Ruth would probably know the, the number to the exact cent. Um, but if I remember correctly, it's around 1 million and 63,000. Is that right? 70, 70, 73. 73. So 73. close. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I wouldn't have breached the limit though. I'd, I'd have just been 10,000 <laughs> off of, off of maximizing it. Uh, but yes, what, what over 1 million and 73,000, uh, Three thousand pounds is the lifetime allowance limit, um, and it applies in the same way. But, 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 am I right in thinking? I mean, I've been hearing some news stories about doctors retiring early because they'd reached their maximum they could pay into your pension. So, 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 is it true that if you actually start early, even with a red, relatively modest amount, say five or six hundred pounds a month, that with that compound interest, it, it is possible to get to those sorts of levels? I mean, you can you can log onto the tool and try it and find out and, and put the numbers in and we'll see we'll see what it what it turns out. Uh, so yeah, uh, I well I think that the uh, that the old uh, story that I used to remember one of my favorite um, sort of pension bits of information was that the quickest way to be a millionaire was to put the price of a coffee into your pension every day from the age of seventeen and by the time that you retire. Uh, you will have a million quid. Um, and I think that's a really nice, a really nice way to kind of conceptualize it down to something that maybe um, is more tangible. Because, you know, I, I would be, I mean, we all buy at least, well, uh, I easily buy at least five coffees a day, let alone one. Um, so to think that all I need to do is take the price of one every day and put that into a pension makes it feel a lot more manageable. Great. And one last question from me. I, I know I'm hogging the, the audience here, but but um, we've talked a bit about the fact that there may be changes uh, at the next budget. So to act today, really, if we're thinking about a pension, what sorts of things could the Chancellor change within pensions, do you think, either this year or in future years that we should be looking out for? Ruth? Literally change absolutely anything um i mean we we just don't know with state pensions specifically um a lot of my clients don't want to um include that into their forecasting because they're not sure whether it's going to be here um around that time so like we said is to to save what you can now into a into a private pension and then um we can kind of work from there great and, and another question here from from one of our audience from rich um, started a Scottish widow's pension a few moons ago now, uh, uh, but not been paying into it recently. Should that pension be resurrected or a new pension started or, or really does he need some individual advice uh, before he, he, he makes any choices about where he should be investing uh, into a pension for the future? That's a, that sounds like a, a, a Ruth one, I think, more of. I, I would agree that there's there's too many things that you probably need to know about that pension other than simply that it was with Scottish widows to be able to say anything. Um, and I guess that's the that's the main difference as well, to clarify between the likes of us and, and Ruth. So we're not regulated to give financial advice. We're an execution service. So we give you the tools to make your own informed decision, whereas Ruth is very much there if you have those questions and you need to look into the depths and the details of your pre-existing pensions. That's where she comes in to give her great expertise. Okay, Thank you great. Very much, uh, yeah. And one question that, again, Chairman's prerogative, I'm just going to try and make everybody feel a little bit uncomfortable now. Uh, how do you guys make your money out of pensions? And, and this is for everybody, including those of us here at VetU. So let me start with Ruth. How do, how do I, how have I built up my pot, do you mean? No, no. How, 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 why are you here today in terms of trying to persuade us? You know, you're, you're a financial advisor and you, you clearly make some money about uh, from, from other people investing into pensions. So I think I just wanted to be really sort of transparent with the audience about what, what advice costs, really. 
Yeah, so um, I've got an employed role. So I'm employed as part of a Reflect Financial. So uh, personally, I don't uh, add anything from it, but um, you can get charged for a lump sum investment up to kind of 4.5%. Um, and then there's like an ongoing charge to manage it. Um, and that can be 0.5% a year. And that's for active management of the of the fund. So making sure it's invested right to meet every single year, um, just to check that it's doing what it should be. Great, thank you. Uh, Phil or Vivian, are you happy to talk to us about how you guys um, make money out of Raindrop? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it is very similar model uh, in the sense of the fact that we we charge a fee for the for the platform. So our all in fee, as we mentioned through that demo, is 0.75% a year. But obviously, that doesn't include any advice that we give, which is why which is why Ruth has that cost on top. Um, but ours would be, uh, as we mentioned before, six pounds twenty five roughly a month for every £10,000 that you have invested with us. I should just clarify as well um, with the launch of our ethical fund. So it's 0.75% for our current existing fund range. It will be 0.79% for our ethical range, which I think is £6.28, I want to say, uh, off the top of my head, or 38 uh, per month for every £10,000. And if an extra 13p isn't worth saving the environment a month, I don't know what is. Great. And I'm going to answer the question for, for Vet you. Uh, so Vet you also get a very small uh, stipend from the first year's contributions to pensions uh, as an introduction fee. Um, it just pays for the subscriptions to things like Zoom and stuff like that for helping us host these events. But I wanted to be transparent about how some of the providers uh, do make their money because I, for one, having been a customer for, of most of them, uh, know that the advice that they give and the returns that a pension can give you far outstrip the small amounts of fees that are charged by any of the providers here today. So wanted to be open and transparent that there are fees associated with pensions, but actually they are very, very small in comparison to the return that you'll get from investing your money wisely over a longer period of time. Ebony, I think we've come pretty much to full time. I don't know whether we answered everybody's questions in the chat, but, but clearly there are a few next steps that we want everybody to take before uh, we log off tonight. First of all, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed tonight and uh, would love to hear more. We run these events regularly. If you haven't already done so, please drop uh, register with VetU, uh, drop onto the VetU website. Um, if you would love to have a chat with Ruth um, and she can give you sort of a personal one-to-one uh, -one and better understand your personal circumstances and help you with making investment decisions around a pension, then please drop us an email at hello at vetu.co.uk. If you've been inspired enough before the, uh, the Chancellor has his way with changing pension uh, potentially uh, in a week's time and, and, and want to drop on uh, and set up a raindrop pension, you can do that tonight. Um, and... Uh, Thank you to the team who have uh, put out a special offer for anybody joining us tonight that they will start you off with £25 into your uh, pension pot. Brilliant. That's absolutely amazing. So I'd love to hear in, in the chat box, um, you know, what's been your one takeaway as well for today? Uh, and I'd love to know as well, do you think your confidence levels have increased also? So if you put a one in before, do you want to share in the chat what your, what your um, confidence levels would be out of 10? So one being I'm clueless. I still don't know anything about pensions to take action. 10 being, oh, I feel like I know everything I need to know. We had so many of you at the ones, twos and threes. It'd be really great to hear if you've moved up a notch or two. So top tips coming through here. Yeah, Hayley saying small amount increase per month can make a huge difference at retirement. And we've got some numbers creeping up from people who had lower numbers now up, up into, the, into the sixes, uh, which is great as well. Uh, Joe saying thanks so much. Really enjoyed it. Checking out my expected pension, uh, state pension was a huge help as well. 
And for those of you, we've been doing so much online, obviously, over the last couple of years, um, and we're really excited to be finally meeting up again in real life. So we are going to be at London Vet Show. Uh, many of us work in other areas as well, so have a few hats on, but we are doing a community mastermind at London Vet Show on the 11th of November. So if you'd love to join us, um, to, Ruth will be with us too, uh, to come and get some more financial support. But also, because we were built to be a community um, together, to co-create together and support one another together we've had so much request for more educational tools so we're actually going to start to actually co-create with you um, our free educational tool suite to help you take action to help you become informed and to help you feel less alone to decrease that stigma on talking about money and we would love to have you at our community mastermind it was absolutely fabulous when we did it two years ago when we launched vet you and now it's about taking action to create these edu educational tools so we'd really love you to come down so again email email us at hello at vetu.co.uk if you've got uh, a london veterinary ticket you're coming anyway brilliant if you were like well I wasn't sure I was going to come or not um maybe financially a bit constrained drop us a line we'll always be able to get you in through that door to do, join that community mastermind and we really like to see some of you there and if we haven't blown you away with too much information tonight remember that pensions is just one of the ways that you might want to save for the future and there is a tripos the three key things that vet you really want to make sure that everybody understands and plans for one is around your health. That is the most important thing to you. Think about how you can protect that health. There are policies there are uh, that can help you with that. Secondly, your income. It's a fact of life that unfortunately all of us need money to get by day to day. Make sure that you plan to make sure that your income is always secure, even if you're unable to work. And then thirdly, as we've been talking about tonight, think about your future. Think about saving for your future. Pensions is a great tax-free way of doing that but there are other ways that you might want to save for the future as well and again uh, one of our IFAs or Ruth could help you with any of those questions that you've got if that is also of interest. Brilliant. Well, we have gone slightly over time. So huge thank you to everyone. If your question has not been answered or you think, well, I really want, really want to get it answered, please do email us at hello at vetu.co.uk and we'll ensure that one of our advisors gets back to you as well. Um, so a huge thank you to Ruth for taking up a power hour with us this evening. A huge thank you to Vivan and Phil as well from Raindrop and also for supporting with that offer, which is so kind of 25 pounds everyone if they want to join in. We're really looking forward to having Ruth join us at London Vet Show. A huge thank you to Matt as well, who's come off USA call straight into here uh, and is extremely busy. Um, so really, really thank you for that. And most importantly, a massive thank you to all of you who showed up um, on this live recording and over 150 of you registered, many of you messaged to say, can't make the live, really looking forward to watching the recording. So if you're watching the recording, um, a huge thank you to you. And um, we really hope you take action. Follow us on social media, um, on all the usual platforms and we're at Vet you Community. We're really looking forward to continuing the conversations with you. Yes, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You've got the past master of demystifying anything to do with the veterinary profession. And if we've done anything tonight in terms of demystifying the future of veterinary pensions, then hopefully that's a great takeaway message. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you to all your thanks in the chat. Um, that goes to the wonderful panellists here today. Great. All right. Take care, all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.